the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to Mass here on uh, the Tuesday of Easter, second week of Easter, celebrating our risen Lord. It's still Easter, time of happy Easter. We come to hear God's beautiful word and to participate in the Eucharist. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life and the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Enable us, we pray, Almighty God, to proclaim the power of the risen Lord, that we who have received the pledge of his gift may come to possess all he gives when it is fully revealed through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was, one of, was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. Thus Joseph, also named by the apostle Barnabas, which is translated son of the encouragement, a Levite and a Cypriot by birth, sold a piece of property that he owned, then brought the money and put it at the feet of the apostles. The word of the Lord. Be the Lord is king, he is robbed in majesty. The Lord, the Lord is king, he is robbed in majesty. The Lord is king, in splendor robed. Robbed is the Lord and girt about with strength. The Lord is king. And he has made the war firm not to be moved. Your throne stands firm form of old. From <coughs> everlasting you are, O Lord. The Lord is king, is your, your decrees as are worthy of trust indeed. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, for length of days. The Lord is king, is Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. The Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, You must be born from above. The wind blows where it wills, and you can hear the sound it makes. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can this happen? 
Jesus answered and said to him, You are the teacher of Israel, and you do not understand this. Amen, amen, I say to you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But you people do not accept our testimony. If I tell you about earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has gone up to heaven <clears throat> except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I think generation after generation is impressed by the opening line of the reading from the Acts of the Apostles, that the community of believers was of one heart and mind. And this is interesting when we see the who made up the community of believers. We have Matthew the tax collector who was for the Romans and we have uh, Simon the zealot who was against the Romans. So we think of all the people in our communities today who are on different political sides of the political spectrum. We think of the religious divides between people. It's very interesting to see that divides weren't a problem. Eventually Paul will write that there is neither Jew nor Gentile. Uh, there isn't man or woman, free or slave. We are all one in Christ. And what's very interesting then in the reading from, from Jesus about the Holy Spirit, the Spirit blows where it wills, the wind blows where it wills, but it's doing its work. And the Holy Spirit is the one who is bringing the harmony about together. And it doesn't happen with just like something from the outside that's bringing it together, like you put pieces of a jigsaw together. It's from the inside because our divisions aren't from the outside, they're much more from the heart, from selfishness, from uh, individual positions, and individual positions affected by pride and material interest. And these are the biggest sources of our divisions, sensuality and pride, of our disorder internally. And to bring us together, we need to be responding inside to the Holy Spirit. And that's the gift of the risen Lord, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one who shapes us. What do we ask the Holy Spirit to teach us? That we, will be, we ask the grace to be docile, to be teachable. That means we are saying that the Spirit of God needs to lead us. That we have not hard hearts, but hearts that can be molded, that can be shaped, that can be influenced by God's Spirit. And the definition of Satan is, I will not serve. And the opposite is love, because love says, I want to do the will of the one I love. And you think you are spouses, you try to please your spouse, and especially before you got married. <laughs> you tried to please each other. This was how you built a relationship. So it's interesting, love helps us do this, and then the pride is, puts us against each other in antagonism, in opposition, in confrontation, in um, domination of the other. And that's the expression of selfishness and how to, a community comes together. And one of the touchstones for this is money. It's a known fact that many marriages break down over money. 
how to manage money, what to do with money, whose money is it anyway. And the availability that they had everything together in the community, shared everything, like families do. And this is a, a very interesting fact that this spirit continues in the church. It wasn't practical to have this for the entire membership of the church, but this is a, a, a charismatic gift that's given to people to live in a shared community. And that's every religious order, every religious community. And you are volunteers, you're not getting a salary as volunteers, you're not making money. It's not a place to go to make money to be a volunteer. It's the opposite. You are giving yourself for free. And then you are serving and you're building up a property and being concerned and helping and keeping it clean and painting it and raising funds to build it. And it's not yours because it's the communities. And this is all over the church. There's so many communities live like this in the church. And this is from the Holy Spirit. It's not because you make a severe commitment that constrains you to live like this. There may be an element of this fight spiritually uh, because we would tend to want stuff for ourselves, to hold stuff for ourselves, but to be detached from material things. And yet to take care and have a nice house for the community, this is not incompatible, but it's about a heart that's free from material things. I'm blessed, I thank the Lord, that this year I'm 50 years in religious life. And these 50 years, uh, it's, thanks be to God, a nice stretch of time. I have never worked for money. And people need to think about this, about the Franciscans, about the Dominicans, about the Jesuits, about all the sisters, about all the different religious orders, uh, the communities of consecrated life. They don't work for money. You say, why do they work then? <laughs> but this is part of the gospel message, the gratuitousness, even though he who is rich made himself poor. So this point today of Barnabas, who gives so much consolation by coming to help in a time of need, selling his property, uh, this spirit continues in the church, but it's coming out of a spirit of love, a spirit of the, of the Holy Spirit moving the hearts to do it. It's not a commando system like in communism that obliged everybody and controlled everybody like this. It's coming from inside, from the heart. What a beautiful way. And it's because the Lord is king. We worship the Lord as king. And because the Lord is king, then we cede our dominion and we... Uh, let the Lord lead us. And we are all imperfect. We don't do it completely perfectly. We have mistakes. Somebody could also abuse it, and that has happened. And uh, that's, that's possible. But the effort is there, the spirit is there, and the experience is there of 2,000 years. And that's very beautiful. And then when uh, Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus, he's talking about the new birth of the person. That it's a person that's no longer enslaved to material attachments. It's a person who is no longer enslaved to their own will. And it's a person who is no longer enslaved to person. This is a new person, a new creation. The whole New Testament is about this new creation of the new person. What an amazing gift we have received. And this is true liberation, and this is true freedom, and this is a doorway to love. It's never accomplished perfectly in any of our lives. And that's part of the work of our whole life. But it's amazing. I think we're going to be incredibly surprised in heaven with the amount of saints and the quality of their sanctity that God, through his grace, accomplished in so many people. And it's not just in the ones who live formally poverty like we do in communities. <coughs> I think we will find many other people <coughs> who have lived detached and have lived in service <coughs> and who have great, reached great heights of holiness and serving in their family, in their community, in their business, in their government, in, in society, and they will have, their hearts will have left and detached from all these material desires and they will be totally transformed by grace. This is God's project with all of us.
We who have been reborn in Christ through the life-giving waters of baptism now share this Eucharist in this, of the same Lord. And we pray that our Christian communities across the world will live the spirit of the first Christian community in Jerusalem and be united in the teaching of the apostles and the fellowship and breaking of bread and the prayers. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear you. <clears throat> we pray that all those women and men committed to religious life through vows and promises to share all things in common and to live joyfully the true spirit of poverty in which they imitate the generosity and contentment of the first Christians, that they will continue to thrive in the church and will be blessed with many new vocations. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. We pray for all those who have been received just 10 days ago into the church through the Easter Vigil, through baptism and the Eucharist, into full communion with the church, that they will find local communities who are welcoming and supportive and living authentic discipleship. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. We pray that Christ's peace, the risen Lord, our Savior, can enter the hearts of all people who are suffering, and especially the hearts of all those who are imposing suffering on others. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. We pray for our own intentions, for the intentions of all those who live here, for those who follow on the social media, and for those uh, who have completed the virtual pilgrimage of prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Father, our King, robed in majesty, fill your church with your holiness as we await the return of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of uh, all Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of the Lord Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times, to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. 
Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Pierre Battista, our Patriarch, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. In the blood of Christ, give me safe for eternal life. Voici le corps et le sang du Seigneur, l'amour du salut et le pain de la vie. <coughs> Dieu immortel se donne en nourriture pour que nous ayons la vie éternelle. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us <clears throat> may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you, Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Soyons toujours joyeux, prions sans cesse, en toutes choses rendons grâce à Dieu. C'est sa volonté sur nous dans le Christ. Gloire à toi, oh Seigneur notre Dieu. À toi, la louange est due, ô oh Dieu dans Sion. Que Thank you, merci beaucoup. And I want just to share with you this evening a, a, a thought about the new publication that was released yesterday from uh, Rome, from uh, the Vatican, on the dignity of the human being, of the human person, on the infinite dignity. That's the title of the document, Dignitas, Infinita, and I invite you all to uh, look up this document, and if you want to get it quickly, Dignitas, like dignity, D-I-G-N-I-T-A-S, Dignitas, Infinita, like infinite, except with an A at the end, and you will find it immediately, and it's a marvelous document. <clears throat> so far I've read about half of it, some of it with audio. And it's wonderful. There are so many things to say about this document. Uh, first of all, the first three parts are really all of the explanation of why we talk about the dignity of the human being. And one of the things that I like very much about the document is that it approaches the subject through the rational dimension. And that's very beautiful. And it also highlights the, um, uh, the Human Rights Declaration of 1948, which is an expression of human dignity. And then it also develops how our faith enriched the understanding of human dignity, that the human being is created in the image and likeness of God. And then about the thinking that has emerged from this injection of understanding about the human being throughout society and philosophy and thinking and theology. And it's very, very beautiful, very encouraging in a time when human dignity is so deeply trampled. So maybe I should have done a prayer for this at the, at the prayers of the faithful. Maybe we do that tomorrow. So I encourage you to read it because maybe you hear a few things in the media, but you need to read the document. And don't try to do it all in one day because it takes a little bit of digestion. You know, so read the document and enjoy it. And one thing that my heart was filled with was how humanity, despite so many negative things through our history, has been able to develop such an extraordinarily wonderful concept of the marvelous dignity of every human being. God bless you. <laughs>